now I introduce to you a concept of one parameter of the atmosphere, which is called the Richardson number. You, ex you know about the Reynolds number, and that is for flows within, um, yeah, for gen general flows, but usually it's for flows in pipes, in um, engineering uh, instruments, uh, devices, and so on. So Richardson number is uh, in the same category as Reynolds number, uh, and it, it is a number that describes the atmosphere. But you don't see uh, people using Richardson number for engineering or for pipes, flows in pipes. They usually use this number for the atmosphere. So as an example, in a statically stable environments or a stable uh, atmosphere, the buoyancy term can reduce TKE by converting it to potential energy by moving cold air up and warm air down. So in stable environments, we know that the buoyancy is low or turbulence is, is suppressed. So in stable environments, this buoyancy is used to suppress the turbulent kinetic energy. So in such situations, the existence of turbulence depends on the relative strength of mechanical generation by wind shear. So I know that there's two types of environment in the atmosphere. One is the unstable and there's the stable. For unstable, there's more of a vertical motion. For stable, it's less vertical motion. But here they use an example for just the stable environment first. And say that if there is no uh, vertical dispersion or vertical movement, then the generation of turbulence, the turbulence is still there, but how is it generated? It is generated through the uh, mechanical uh, way. And this mechanical generation is, uh, this mechanical portion of uh, turbulence is generated by wind shear, which we've already talked about in, uh, before. And this wind shear is, uh, well, for statically stable environments, it is more important than the buoyant. Um, buoyant term. So the ratio of these two terms defines the dimensionless Richardson number. So basically, the buoyancy term divided by the mechanical term. And the ratio between these two terms is the Richardson number. And I'll talk about this equation, that which is the Richardson number. So Richardson Ri number, which can be approximated by the vertical gradients of wind and potential temperature. So let's try to break down this equation. So remember, Richardson number is just the ratio of two terms. One is the wind shear term, and the other is the buoyant term. So here we see the two ratios, right? This ratio, this term, and this term here. This is the buoyancy term, or this is the mechanical term. And it says here, vertical gradients of wind and potential temperature. So gradients, this del theta over del z is the temperature gradient. And that is the buoyancy term. And du over dz and dv over dz is the wind gradient. So buoyancy over mechanical generation of turbulence. So let's say if Richardson number is large, then the buoyancy term is large. Gener um, turbulence is generated by buoyancy more than mechanical. Well, if, it's the, if this value ri is less than 1, then we can guess that the buoyancy term is low while the the uh, mechanical term is large. Don't worry about the G over T. G is just gravity, a constant. It doesn't change. And T is temperature. And you notice that once you cancel the terms, this reaches a number becomes dimensionless. So it's a value without any units. It's just a value that shows the degree of stability of the atmosphere. Where larger values means more generation uh, turbulence is generated by the buoyancy term. If lower values less than one, means it's uh, mechanically generated. Turbulence is generated by mechanical uh, path by the me mechanical path. So let's go into some values of uh, Ri again. The equation there. Oh yeah. By the way, the term in the num numerator that means the one on top is the square of the Brunt Bicellar frequency. So. We're not going to talk about this, but just know that this is the brunt by solar frequency. Laminar flow becomes turbulent when Ri drops below a critical value of Ric, 0.25. That means large values of Ri, uh, more than 0.25, not very large, let's say 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, or even 1, means that it is laminar flow. Less than 0.25 is turbulent flow. 
So turbulent flow often stays turbulent, so we don't see much of, I don't, we don't see uh, any laminar flow in the atmosphere. So turbulent flow can often stay turbulent, even for resistance numbers as large as one. Oh, okay. So even though it's more than that, more than 0 0.25, it can still be considered as um, turbulent. I think it's just the nature of the, the atmosphere. But becomes laminar only at very, very large values of Ri. So maybe a lot higher than one. Now the presence or absence of turbulence between 0 0.25 and one depends on the history of the flow a behavior analogous to hysteresis. Hysteresis, it means it's a lag of uh, values. But don't get caught up too much about this term here. But, it, but the important point here is that most of the time, the Richardson number of the atmosphere that shows this, uh, the, the relationship between the two terms is less than 0 0.25. But even though it's more than 0 0.25, it could still be turbulent and only approaches laminar uh, conditions when it's a lot larger than one, which rarely happens or doesn't happen. Flows for which our eye is less than 0.25 is more common, are said to be dynamically unstable. Oh, so another point that uh, this one implies is that anything that's more than 0.25 until one uh, are uh, stable atmospheres or semi-stable atmospheres. That's Richardson the number. Now we rarely uh, calculate Richardson the number because you will need to get the temperature profile for one. Let's say you want to calculate that. It looks complicated to calculate it, but it's not that difficult, right? Just follow whatever that's needed here. For example, G is a constant, 9.80, depending on the units that you use. T is Kelvin or degree Celsius. Del, theta, V is just the temperature difference at two heights in uh, Kelvin or degree Celsius. If you use here degree Celsius, this one also has to be degree Celsius. If you use here Kelvin, this one also has to be Kelvin. And del Z is just the difference in height. So basically, this is just the temperature difference in height. This one is just meter per second, the, the mean wind at two different heights. This is the lateral wind, mean lateral wind at two different heights. And you square this, square this, you add them up, you get one term. You get this term and divide by this, you get the term. So for you to calculate this region number, you can imagine that there's a tower and then you have multiple levels of measurements of temperature and velocity. So imagine like one height, anemometer and temperature sensor, and then another height, anemometer and temperature sensor, and another height, preferably more than two heights, temperature sensor and anemometer. Once you have this, you have a temperature and wind profile, and from that, oh, you can calculate this, right? Uh, most weather stations don't have that. They only have um, one level of measurement, so that's why you're not able to calculate which is the number, because you just have one level, okay? So that's why you don't see this often. But once you do uh, have the which is the number value, then you'll be able to predict whether the atmosphere is unstable or stable. Mm -hmm.